This FAQ Monday is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Well, hello, and welcome to another FAQ Monday. I'm your host, Fluff, and hasn't it been a long week already? It's Monday, dude. Huh? It just started. What? Oh, it's not just a fancy name. Today is actually Monday. All right. That's how it's got to be. What's, what's that? What do you think of more guitars switching to Jackson guitars? I.e. Mick Thompson, Gus G, and now Rob Caggiano. I think it's great that a lot of people are going back to Jackson. I mean, Jackson was the hard rock and metal brand in, you know, the 80s and early 90s. And, you know, having been owned by Fender for some time now, it just makes sense for a lot of those players that would, you know, that do like Fenders, that maybe the Fenders don't suit them so well. You know, for example, like Scott Ian or something like that. Um, Jackson just makes a lot of sense for a lot of players. And it's cool to see a lot of people going back to Jackson. Um, speaking as someone who has had some high level endorsement deals, I think for those players that are gravitating towards Jackson, in some case going back to Jackson, I think it's either one of two things or both or a combination of both. They simply love the instrument and they just want to play what they want to play. A. B. They're not being treated well by the company that they are currently with or have been with and they simply want to go and move on to someone who is going to treat them better or you know, not as bad as their current company. I also think it has a lot to do with the personal relationship with their artist rep. You know, you become friends with your contact if you're constantly talking back and forth with your guitar company, string company, etc., etc. And a lot of guys will follow their reps because of course reps will move on and go and be an artist rep with uh, another company. My artist rep at uh, Line 6, Matt Ferguson, he was at Gibson for like a decade. So it's very, it's very incestuous of where people work, but a lot of times those artists will simply just follow their dude because they have a long-standing relationship with them. And I don't know if that's the case with any of these guys mentioned with Rob or, you know, Mick Thompson or Gus G, but, uh, you know, I suspect it's a combination of that in addition to simply just thinking the guitars are kick-ass. That's awesome. Raid Shadow Legends is a brand new collection RPG game that has been downloaded by 10 million players in its first three months already. That is crazy. Raid Shadow Legends also has insane graphics, strategic gameplay, huge boss fights, an amazing storyline, and over 400 champions to collect and personally customize. And my personal favorite champion happens to be Gaelic because he's just, he's huge. I mean, look at him. Now, what I love about this game is there really is something for everyone. Some folks are into strategy, some are into just collecting all of the items that they can. I myself, I'm, I'm into the fighting, I'm, yeah, I'll admit it. Raid Shadow Legends is actually a legit fun game to play, but don't take my word for it. There are over 200,000 reviews in the app stores combined, and it has nearly a perfect score in all cases. That really says something about this game. In addition to a new update that is now live, there is also a new awesome loyalty reward program for new players. Get a new daily login reward for the first 90 days of gameplay. That's pretty cool. So what are you waiting for? Click down below in the description for your special links to download for free and get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey today. Have you considered opening your home studio for a recording gig on the side? I mean, I do do albums here. Um, this is my house. I'm upstairs in my own house. So it's not something that I think my, my lady necessarily wants to have just random people over and hanging out. If I had like a, a standalone workspace, which I do eventually tend to, to have for the channel, an actual dedicated workspace where I go to the office, I can shoot, I can be creative, I have this set up. I would probably open it up a bit more, but like, you know, just that over the weekend, this past weekend, I was doing um, a record and reamping guitars and recording vocals for a local band called Head Honcho uh, here in the Northwest. They're friends of mine. I'm very picky about what I work on because I don't do it full time. Generally, if I really, really like it and I'm friends with the dudes, I'll do it, generally speaking. And it's not about money and it's not about anything else. I just choose passion projects currently and I feel lucky to be able to do so. 
I don't have to just choose something because I need to make a buck. I love recording and I love tracking guitars and vocals and making records, so I get to just choose what I want to do. And in that respect, I still do have bands in here. And, uh, you know, sometimes we'll spend a couple of days straight just working on a record in here and it's a lot of fun. But yeah, eventually I would like to move all of this YouTube operation into an actual standalone space. And uh, then maybe we could start having bands in there. Why are people choosing the Helix over Headrush? I've seen comparisons and it seems so similar, but the interface of the Headrush seems so much better. I think there's several different reasons. I mean, everyone has their own reasons why they choose a particular piece of gear. I can only speak for myself, but honestly, the interface for the Helix is so intuitive and so well thought out. It's pretty tough to beat, but on a technical level, at one time, and I will preface this by saying I own or have have owned all of the processors. I've had the Head Rush, I've had the Helix, I have a Fractal, I've had a Kemper, I've had just about everything out there. Um, there was a time when I tried to use the Helix for a four cable method with my live rig and using it how I use the Helix now. The problem is it doesn't have scenes or doesn't have snapshots in the way that the Helix or the Fractal uh, Axe FX3 does. Meaning if I wanted to change a patch, there was always a momentary delay while the processor loaded whatever the patch state was versus the Helix and the Fractal, they share, you know, the, the Helix calls it snapshots, the Fractal calls it scenes, but you can have a set of effects and you can save the states, the on off states. So you can make different scenes. So have multiple effects on in this scene, this effect on in that scene, but it preloads all the DSP. So it's gapless. There is no momentary lag or, you know, stop in the sound when you switch. And there was with the head rush. Also with the head rush, um, I couldn't assign multiple MIDI changes to w within the same patch with different states. Meaning if I want this to go on channel three of the amp, I can't do this effect state selecting channel three from the amp as well. It has to go to a different, I can't remember exactly the technical reason, but I couldn't go back to the other channel, I had to have to sign a different channel to each, a, a different MIDI change to the same channel on the amp. There was no overlap at all. And there was some weird MIDI stuff at that time. Maybe there isn't anymore, I don't know. But the lag was was primary reason why I didn't go with Head Rush. Cause you know, I don't wanna be playing and then step, and then you know, hit the foot switch and have it momentarily just drop out and come back. Like that sucks, so. I don't know, everyone has their own reasons. I'm not knocking the head rush in any way, but I'm just saying like, you know, there are some very key differences between the head rush and pieces of gear like the Helix and the Fractal and the Kemper. So are you with Ernie Ball Music Man now or what? I mean, technically I have been an artist on the Ernie Ball roster for several years now. I'm on the back of the pack of the strings and with Ernie Ball Music Man, it's more or less the same thing. I've exclusively played the Stingray basses for several years now. And yes, indeed, I have moved on over to playing the guitars in an official capacity. Hence why you guys are seeing all of the Music Man uh, guitars that I have been getting both on Instagram and YouTube. Um, I am super, super honored and excited and stoked and I love them a lot. And I don't know, it just it made logistical sense for having guitars for tour and beating up and sweating all over and having that support that I would potentially need, hopefully not in a very serious capacity on the road. So it just was kind of a natural fit. I have had a long relationship with Sterling and uh, Tim and all the guys over at Ernie Ball Music Man. And I am just uh, happy to be part of the Music Man family. Pretty cool. Linkin Park's guitar tones? I always liked Linkin Park's guitar tones. I think they were really suited for the tunes, especially the first couple of albums. I know Brad, their guitar player um, is a, fairly nerdy guitar guy. He likes gear. He knows what he likes sonically. I know he's not like a super, super deep guitar nerd, but um, I know he knows what is best suited for the song. And that's how I'd really define the guitar tones of Linkin Park. I mean, most of the early stuff was just a straight up the middle two channel dual rectifier. Um, and then I think, I believe he got into Plexis and Marshall-y kind of tones. And then live he would tour with like a, a Randall 
MTS modular system or something like that. But uh, yeah, I would I would consider Linkin Park guitar tones to be huge and thick and very serving for the song, um, which is all you can ask for a guitar player. I mean, it's nothing that really stuck out, but I think in Linkin Park's case, that's a really good thing because it just let the melody and the songs breathe. And uh, he's also a really, really creative, amazing guitar player as well. I'm a huge fan of him and Linkin Park as a lot of us are. And yeah, I just, uh, great guitar tones all around. Do you think your guitar collection is well-rounded? I mean, for what I do, yeah, I guess so. I always want a guitar with like, you know, P90s in it and like a hollow body, but like I've had those things in passing over the years and I would never use them and I would just get rid of them. For what I do for this channel and for my band, yeah, I think I have those bases covered several times over. I have an entire storage locker full of guitars and amps and cabs and all sorts of stuff, which I should I'll probably do a video on eventually. But yeah, I think I have the tools I need to be me and to go outside of that if I want. I don't feel like I am limited in any way by the guitars that I have, which is an amazing feeling. I'm incredibly lucky to be in that kind of situation. I do still want to get some kind of a P90 guitar. Ironically, I had a P90 equipped Valentine that I gave to Dragged Under guitarist Josh Wildhorn, also co-host of this channel, and uh, I took the pickups out. So, yeah, whatever. But I would love to get a guitar with P90s because I really do actually like P90s a lot. And now, Fluff reads a tweet. How about we all unite and fight the real issue? Disney making live action versions of classic animated movies. Right? My suggestion to you this week is to check out my new Patreon. I shut down the YouTube membership and I've moved my stuff on over to Patreon and there's lots of cool perks. It's, there's tiered stuff now and uh, there's just a lots of cool things that I couldn't do with the YouTube membership. Yeah, I'm plugging my own stuff. I don't even care. I, I made a Patreon and if you want to support me even further than liking and subscribing, you are subscribed, right? I know you're subscribed. Then head on over to my Patreon. I will link it down below in the description. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun over there in the coming months, I promise. All the pickable links down below in the description. You have been wonderful, I have been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.